from this to this with a little bit of this and this but this can turn into this and this if you don't know about this electric stovetops and ovens have revolutionized the way that we cook and live with precision temperature control nearly instant surface heat and simple cleanup we can spend less time sweating over a hot stove and more time stuffing our bellies. As wonderful as all this may seem, few will ever give a second thought to how it all works. That is, until it's not working anymore. Let's take a moment to look at the electric burner element. What's under that marvelous shiny facade? What's caused the stove that you've neglected to suddenly turn cold? And how you can rekindle the heat that you never really appreciated until it was gone? Like most appliances, ovens and stovetops are actually fairly simple machines. They use a series of electrical circuits to energize different components at the proper times. As always, a great amount of caution should be used when troubleshooting and repairing electric appliances to keep that last meal from being your last meal. Fortunately, almost all of the components of an electric stovetop or oven can be tested while disconnected from the electrical supply. If you don't have one of these babies, or don't know the first thing about how to use one, I've got you covered. Let your fingers do the walking and come on down to AppliancesAssistant.com and have one of these shipped to your front door while you learn how to use it by watching a video. It doesn't get much easier than that. Okay, enough of my yapping, let's get to the fixin'. Let's start at the top, or more appropriately, the surface. Whether you have a glass top or coil elements, the idea is the same. Turn a switch to send electricity through the burner element and bingo, you've got heat. What could go wrong? Well, actually, there's three things that can go wrong. Either the switch doesn't close and allow electricity to flow to the burner element, the burner element is broken in some way and won't allow electricity to flow through it, or the circuit is not energized with the correct amount of electricity needed to do its work. Heating elements used in an electric range need 240 volts to operate. In fact, when a heating element is on, it is constantly supplied with 120 volts. It is only when another independent circuit is applied, used to cycle the element on and off, that heat is actually generated. First, let's check the power supply plug. Your plug will have three or four connections, two hot connections and one neutral connection. In this case, there is also a ground connection. Set your meter to the first setting above 240 volts AC and check the right and left sides independent from one another to the neutral connection. Each should give a reading of around 120 volts. Now check across the two hot connections. You should get a reading of around 240 volts. If you don't, reset the breakers that monitor the range circuit and try it again. If that worked, congratulations. If not, let's keep digging. Each one of the three components used in an electric burner circuit can be tested for continuity. Now if you just thought to yourself, what the heck does that mean? Watch the how to use a voltmeter video and then you'll be up to speed. Remember that when checking for continuity or resistance, the component being tested needs to be disconnected from the rest of the circuit to prevent false readings through some parallel circuit. Because the heating element generates heat through electrical resistance, it should show some resistance when tested for continuity. It should not show as being open or having infinite resistance. The switch that routes electricity to the burner element can be checked in the same way. It should be closed, allowing electricity to flow through to the element whenever the switch is turned on. It should also be open, not allowing electricity to flow whenever the switch is turned off. Remember that with a 240 volt electric range, it takes two to make a thing go right. Two 120 volt circuit connections, that is. So follow the wires back from the element and check each connection independent from the other. L1 input to output, L2 input to output. Most switches are labeled L1 and L2, as well as H1 and H2. You may also see a P terminal. L stands for line or input, and H stands for heater or output. The P terminal generally is the same connection as H1 and is usually used for an indicator light. So, L1 and H1, and L2 and H2, should show contact when the switch is on and nothing when the switch is off. It's always wise to snap a quick picture for reference before you start pulling off wires for your test. An electric range burner switch is a very interesting device. It's often assumed that this style of switch, which is also called an infinite switch, fluctuates the amount of current being supplied to the burner and so controls the amount of heat that is generated by the heating element. 
In most cases, this is not true, except for some very high-end stoves that use a device called a potentiometer. The more commonly used infinite switch has an adjustable temperature-sensitive bimetal contact that will open and close one of the two 120-volt circuits, cycling the burner on and off automatically to maintain the desired temperature. As current flows through the closed switch, a small amount of heat is generated, causing this thin strip of metal to flex out and break contact. By setting the burner switch to high, the maximum amount of physical pressure is placed on this flexible contact making it more difficult to flex out and open the circuit, while a lower setting reduces the amount of physical pressure making it easy to flex and open. Because infinite switches use the flow of current to generate the heat required for opening and closing the switch, it is important to note the wattage or amperage ratings of the switch. The switch used to control a large burner element with a 10 amp draw will not correctly cycle a small burner that uses less amperage, and vice versa. So what if the burner sticks on? Well, the most common cause would be that the contacts within the switch are sticking closed, or that carbon has built up and is bridging the gap that would normally exist in a new switch. The most common electrical supply problem is a bad contact or connection. Especially when you're dealing with a range that has coil elements that plug into a receptacle, which is also called a block. These contacts can become corroded over time and may need to be cleaned with sandpaper or replaced in extreme cases. I know that was kind of a lot of information to pack into 7 minutes, but I hope that you found it helpful. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe and that there's a lot more appliance troubleshooting, repair help, and parts available at ApplianceAssistance.com. Thank you for watching.